It's Hibs vs St Johnson in the Scottish Cup final and there will be fans. Meanwhile it's an exodus at Fair Park as Alan Campbell and Declan Gallagher are set to leave and Wraith or Dundee are four games from possible promotion. It's episode 21 of the False Night East podcast. With me today we've got a full house. We've got Andy, Kyle, Lewis, Marcus and for his first pod we've got Gary as well. Welcome guys. Alright, right, see you guys. Yeah, welcome we guys. So we'll start right. with the Scottish Cup semi-finals, um, and this is Gary's first pod. He is a Dundee United fan, um, and uh, we'll start with that semi-final between Hibs and Dundee United. I, I found it. I think we really should look back at that result and be quite happy with it. As in, we've secured Premiership, but we've also got the semi-final. I would bite your arm off at that. A lot of people are upset with it, but. I think it's in a in a outlook. It's pretty good. Yeah, I tend to agree with that. Um, I can get on to sort of the Hibs point of view later, but I have been seeing a lot of negativity from your fans online. Um, well, at the end of the day, like like you said, you know, I think you're being quite level headed and saying like your aim was need to break into the top six this season. It was just to stay up. You have stayed up, and you've made a semi final, but been put out by a team that's not mainly. Like, you know, finish third in the league. You know, it's nothing. Yeah, exactly. Do. That's so like yeah. such a hard task to do. Aye. Um. So yeah, I mean, it's no, <laughs> it's not quite panic stations yet. Uh, I'd be for you, but um, but I I don't think you were that bad in the game. I thought uh, I think we disagreed with that. <laughs> I don't think you were too happy with the performance, but you were quite. I thought it was definitely points. offside. Uh, what Doidge's goal was, yes, but we'll get onto that later. Um, oh. I know that the. the He's had, uh, what was it, Harks had like two chances to start off with. Uh, he, I, the, um, I used to really rate Harks and now he's really gone down. Like, he, I uh, remember his goal in the 6 2 derby against Dundee. That was Put a it, like top left corner. I was like, yes, and now he's kind of dipped off a bit. Still good in points, but. Yeah, no, he, he should have done better with both of those. Um, the wee, obviously, the wee slip, the pass slipped through from, from Shankland. If it just hit that first time, probably he's beating, beating Macy. Um, yeah, probably, yeah. And then the header, you know, I don't know. If you know if he's any good with his head normally, but not really, he's not really a heading kind of guy. Uh, he really just doesn't he position himself the best for it, you know. But again, that's Porches has completely missed that. My granddad was, I was watching it with my granddad, he was raging at it. He said, Porches, he's, he's gone for the header, he's nowhere near the man, and he's completely missed it. And if it if it wasn't Hearts, if it was Shankland in that position, you know, you'd hate to think what would have happened from our point of view. But um, so I think the first sort of 15 minutes, we got a bit lucky. I think you you could have, uh, or you were on the front foot to start off with. A little bit, uh, we kind of came out the gate a bit banging, but yeah. Yeah, uh, but I thought we grew into the game. Uh, obviously, the performance before wasn't a, anything special. It was kind of just lackadaisical. Um, All over the shop. Yeah, the the one against St. Johnson the week before, you know, like players like Jackson Irvin and Newell, who normally keep a midfield ticking. Just I thought he was, I really like quite like Irvin's playing. Yeah, uh, he played one of his best games. Uh, on Saturday against you, he, I don't know. I feel like everyone had to bounce back, and a lot of them did that. You know, Dodge, a lot of criticism this season. Um, it's been a really odd season, like where we can be doing well, but we're only ever one result away from a total fan meltdown. And you know, Ross isn't good enough, and this and that player is not good enough. Yeah, and totally. We need yeah. To, you know, so I think, I think we've heard quite a lot from, like. From your point of view, Marcus, you've had meltdowns. Um, I've, I've, I've I've had uh, rants, in, especially after the St Johnston uh, semi final. But um, I think even if we lose the final at this point, it would be mad to sack Ross um, because you can't you can't keep or sack a manager just based off one performance. I mean, if you take a step back, maybe something I should have done earlier in the season is take a step back and look at it as a whole. Um, from where we were with Hecky, where we could have been relegated if we'd have to hold a Hecky to, you know, we've got the makings of a really good squad. Um, signing Daniel McKay like the last week is an excellent way signing. Um, building a squad of young Scottish talent, it's, um, it's exciting to see what he's building. So I think sacking him off the back of if we lose the final, it's uh, pretty, pretty idiotic because then what's to stop us bringing in another Hecky or another, I don't know. <laughs> Terry Butcher or whatever, you know. So um I but um no, like like I was saying though, this semi final, a lot of players came out the traps and, and were really, you know, starting to, to look the part. Like like Gary was saying, Jackson Irvin I, I was really impressed with as well. Um 
And one player to mention is Osalberg. You know, we had Gogic suspended, and there was always a question mark about, you know, who's would it be McGinnis or Halberg to replace him? But Halberg, he was absolutely fantastic. I don't know what you thought, Gary, but... Yeah, no, I thought it was class as well. I think he really That's set himself apart. Probably his best game in a hip shirt, if I'm being honest. Uh, he's been kind of hot and cold before. Um, Sam, a lot of people were saying he was like Slivka. Uh, I know you were a fan of Slivka, but in the... He'd, he'd have a, a brilliant game and then just no show it for another five. You know, like uh, just a bit inconsistent and you can't really tell what kind of midfielder they are as well. Like when we brought him, when we brought Halberg in, he was meant to be this defensive mid. and But that was just Hecky bringing in three attacking mids. And yeah, but that's, that's, that's what Hecky did. He said you know, he signed defensive midfielders and then yeah, none yeah. of them were actually defensive midfielders. I know, I know, I know. We got Vela, Halberg and somebody else, Newell, Newell in, and we thought each of them would, you know, um, for that role, but um, no, like Halberg was impressive. Um, Nisbet, what a finish! Uh, doing really well for the goal. Um, I looked back at it, and it, I think it's Liam Smith that makes the error, though. Because um, I think w- when you're looking at your own team scoring, you always kind of look over the mistakes that the opposition make, and you just kind of focus on what your team's done. But I, I did notice, I, I recognised that we wouldn't have scored that if it wasn't for. Um, Smith kind of leaving that for Jackson Irvin to obviously chest it down and, and put on to Nisbet. I don't know if you noticed that, Gary. But, uh, yeah, I did. I saw that. It was quite yeah. interesting when he did that. Yeah, because he kind of just heads it and then backs off from it, like knowing that Jackson Irvin's there. So it's kind of an odd one. but um, No, yeah, totally. It was yeah. a strange one, definitely. I've I, I see, I seen yeah. the first goal and um, obviously it was a mistake, but um, mm. Jackson Irvin did well with a chest. I thought it was really... Very good play. A really good play. And then obviously switched out to Nisbet and Nisbet getting the good finish. Does, Nisbet does what he does, just really quick, um, accurate finishing. Um, it, what we've kind of missed for a while, I think, since we had Jason Cummings and uh, and Stokes as a front pair. But, um, but yeah, and then obviously second half comes around. Um, we kind of keep up the pressure. I think Mickey Mellon said that you played better second half. I tend to disagree. I think you were better the first half. I think we were better honest. the first half. You, uh, the definitely. last 10 minutes, the last 10 minutes you were kind of putting on the pressure a wee bit. Um, but mainly when, when we decided to go for it then, yeah, totally. Yeah, we'd already sealed the, the win up, I guess. And we can talk about the goal. It was it was obviously offside. Um, you'll disagree with me, but um, Deutsch had the back in the net, had the ball in the back of the net later. Uh, and it should have been you know, called for an advantage. No, actually, but, I should be just right at the time. We're both a crap. Aye. That uh, makes the, sense. The referee made a mistake with that. Um, so, yeah. The, Deutsch deserved the goal at the end of the day. He had it in the back of the net for the Boyle. You know, the one where Boyle was brought down the end of the box. Yeah. Um, but, obviously, it should have been um, called for advantage because, you know... Nah, well, it was already... definitely a foul. It was like that bad yeah. you have to stop the game, I think. Oh, right. Yeah, well... Um, but yeah, regardless of of Dodge being offside, it was a beautiful bit of play. Um, we link up from Nisbet and Boyle, and it was the most un Dodge goal I've I've seen him score. He usually like he usually doesn't score goals like that, where he just kind of like has it on the edge of the box, takes a few wee touches, and just slots it in the corner. Like he's very much a a like. No, yeah, totally. Yeah, he, he scores very strange goals a lot of the time. Um, You'll know Gary because he scored more go- goals against you than any other team in the. Yeah, I know it is, and I know, but yeah. <laughs> but, totally. um, I just, but yeah, that goal yeah. did look like the Nisbet one, but from the opposite side, it really accurate in the corner. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I just a really lovely, lovely finish, you know. Um, so yeah, and then after that, it's uh, game over, really. Um, yeah. Um, that was class. No, I thought it was pretty good overall. Main points have been said. Yeah, I know. I'm quite happy with that. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it sees Hibs through to a first Scottish Cup final in five years. Um, obviously, the last time they were in a Scottish Cup final, I think we all remember what happens. Um, and they'll face. No. <laughs> no, it's been a race for memory now. Has it now? And they'll face the team that knocked them out in the League Cup semi-finals and the team they faced uh, last weekend as well, um, St Johnston, who beat St Mirren two goals to one. Mm. I, uh, I saw that game. It was uh, I watched it. It was really, actually, really, really, really good game and high-quality football from both sides. I think, mm. actually, St Mirren were very unlucky. So St Mirren were the best team through the whole game. They put the pressure on through the whole game. And then Kelly, eh, not Kelly, St Johnston get their first goal. 
and the heads go down and St. Mirren are suddenly forgetting to play football. St. John's get the second goal and he brings the manager brings he brings the team in to the side of the pitch for whilst St. John's are celebrating the second goal, right? He, and he, he clearly gives them one hell of a, a shouting at because after that second goal, they come out and they're playing phenomenally. They're 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 playing how they were in the first half again and then they they get their goal, but they they were unlucky not to get another one after that and take the game to extra time. So it was a, it was a real shame actually for Chris Kevin, who got the opener for St Johnson in the seventy uh, second minute, and then just two minutes later, Glenn Medical made two nil. Um, and as you said, that's that's when the St Mirren heads dropped. Um, Colin McCarthy got a goal back for St Mirren, but in the eighty six minute, yeah. it's probably a little bit too li- uh, too little, too late. Um, I wanted to talk a bit about Glenn Middleton because he's uh, on loan from Rangers um, and he's yes. put in a really good performance in this semi final. Yeah. Obviously, it's good to see Glenn getting, I think, picked up man of the match because he's got the assist as well for the first one. Yeah. And obviously, with a stunning free kick as well. Yeah. Uh, so, from obviously a Rangers player on loan to another Scottish club, it's good to see him doing well. Obviously, didn't hide, didn't work out for him as well. He did the hips, but um, yeah, no, it's good to see. But then a lot of people are saying, like, does does he get starting time next season? Do you, do you recall his loan, or like, like what do you do with him? But honestly, I, from an Rangers' perspective, I don't really see him getting in the team at the moment. Mm-hmm. Like, where, where, where does he slot into? Like, yeah, the, the Davis is, Davis is playing unbelievable. At the moment, obviously he's he's not got long. He's aging, um, but yeah, I know it's. I, I can't see him getting in the squad next season anyway. Um, I mean, the the star of that game actually, I think, until the St John's goals was actually Connor McCarthy, who obviously got the St Mirren goal. I mean, he's probably been St Mirren's player of the season. Uh, he's been pretty fantastic for them so far, and you know he was. Re- rewarded with uh with his goal but he um i mean yeah. he's he made the the big well i say the big leap he was playing over in ireland you know he, i mean he even has european experience with the uh, cork cork city obviously had a couple europa league seasons so um no he, he's been obviously they signed him in january last season but this season he's really really turned on the form for st Mirren. uh but i think I, I saw him at the end of the game he was I think he was almost crying at the end of the game. He just had his head in his hands because he was he was at fault for for the second goal. He he did switch off, but concerned how good he was for the rest of the game. So I I, I think maybe a top half club will come come in for him at the uh, in the summer. And I think potentially if Hibs are looking to strengthen at the back, they could go in for him. I think it would be a good signing for them. He's only twenty three. Um... He's young. No, yeah, he's, he's absolutely young. I mean, he's got European experience and he's got. Um, He's got years on his side, and obviously being Irish, you know, potentially would uh, be more inclined to sign with Hibs or Celtic. I don't think it Celtic is, would go in for him, but I think it makes Hibs... sense as well since uh, St. Mirren's like our feeder club these days. So. Uh, exactly. No, the um, the, yeah, the board have made deals, so the the two board boards know each other. So yeah, I think that's it, a, it makes sense. Thing. Like that's that's an area where we really do need to strengthen as well. Um, there's news about us signing Jason Kerr, which. I don't know how much I believe it. It would be really nice. I've constantly said in this podcast how much I'd love us to sign Jason Kerr. Yeah. But um, there's obviously going to be attention down, sorry, from him as well. So yeah. you, know, you never know. Um, but if we don't get Kerr, then that would be a really good option as well. Obviously. Um, um, yeah, just an area in general we need to strengthen. So, so yeah, I wouldn't see a problem with that. Yeah, I... Um... Me and Max were talking before the pun, saying that Jason Carey is probably, like, if St. Johnson either win the cup or if Hibs win the cup, St. Johnson would get Europe either way. And mm, Jason yeah. Kerr would want to probably stay with St. Johnston to see them through Europe. Um, yeah, probably. I just want to keep on that topic of transfers. Kyle, would you take <laughs> money from St. Johnston for Glenn Middleton? Or would you want him to come back to Rangers? Oh, right. Oh, Not entirely sh- <laughs> sure. It depends if the. I don't know. Not not entirely sure. Um, I would like to see him either go back on loan, but um, yeah, 
I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a tough one to think. Um, but obviously, he's doing well in Johnson, so obviously it depends on him and his agent what they want to do. But I still, it's it's hard to tell because obviously you don't know where he's going to fit in that Rangers team. But I, like I kind of would like to see Mike have a more of a run in the Rangers team. But again, we've seen. No, I get what you mean. Yeah, because he'd I think he'd benefit from that. Yeah. yeah. Could he but, yeah. possibly have like? Because obviously Rangers will be in the Champions League um, qualifiers next season, and obviously mm-hmm. big games in Europe. Having Ben Middleton as a squad player who could play, say, the league games between Champions League uh, or for um, the cup games could be a good option for them. Yeah, potentially. But again, obviously, it's, 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 hard, it's hard to tell. It really is hard to tell. But we need to sort of step up our cup games more next season. I think that'll be one of Steam Jazz's priorities, obviously, keeping keeping the, the championship as well. Um yeah, I don't know. It's it's a tough one to tell right at, at this moment of time. But obviously, he's doing he's doing well at St Johnson, especially in that semi final as well. But again, he didn't he didn't even make this, the the start eleven for St Johnston. So, but he did come on and obviously played well. So he's um, calm yeah. a lot, a lot, 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 lot of decisions a, to make anyway. He's been more of an impact sub sometimes for them. Um, they they have like a kind of deep squad and they tend to rotate around. So you know, it's Weatherspoon, um, O'Halloran or Middleton, you know, on the wings or on the flanks. Um, but, uh, yeah, Again, obviously we've got uh, likes of Ryan Kent and then obviously Scott Wright on the other side potentially as well because he he's going to be a key player next season I think. And obviously you've got Roof as well. It's, it's it's a tough one. It's tough. It really is a tough one to pick. Really, yeah, for, for his career, it's probably in his best interest to to look away for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, hundred percent. It's. Uh, I mean, I don't know. You've been critical in the past, like letting Doherty go, letting McCrory go to Aberdeen as well. But I think and also now where... the same with. Um, um, Billy Gilmore as well. Yeah, but I think this this case is a is one where you know he's not going to get in the team anytime soon. He yeah, needs first team yeah. football. I mean, you could argue for Doherty, like he maybe would have been getting more time, you know, the way he was playing with us, especially. But yeah, I don't know. I'm not too sure. I do. Um, I do like Glenn. He he has. I think he's 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 proven himself. Like obviously, not hmm. not 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 enough, but he has he has shown glimpses of like really good I mean, play uh, when he plays in a Rangers shirt yeah w- w- with us I mean it, it wasn't the best loan spell but he's he's at least bounced back from it and doing well at St. Johnson he, he seems to have a grudge against us for some reason I don't know why um, none of us were yeah it, it's, it's, it's a tough one it is a tough one I, I think I th- obviously for his yeah. career then yeah he's probably best yeah. to look elsewhere exactly um, um, I think... St. Johnson come with a right because obviously they've got money now come, potentially coming in. Well, yeah. St. Johnson are a really well-run football club. Like, it's been in the rival fan. I've always admired how they, like, they'll come into money and not go nuts with it. They'll just kind of keep it and then be really careful with it, but also, like, still go up and be consistent. It's just a shame they've got no support. Yeah. It's mainly just Perth, isn't it? Yeah. Perth's not a football city. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. It's a tough one to on Glenn, but um, yeah, obviously, I think. I obviously don't want to see him go because obviously he's 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 a good good player and he's got a lot of potential coming in. Obviously he's getting older now and he probably wants to look for places that he wants to actually start every game, start every week. And he's found a club that suits yeah. him as well. You know he's obviously yeah yeah yeah. Right there. And then he 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 might even have a shout now of starting for the final. You know. Probably. Talk, talking of transfers, there is one player who is confirmed to be leaving next season. Uh, and that is Motherwell's Alan Campbell, who Graham Alexander has revealed that um, he won't be staying on for next season. Look at this. Ouch. Um, <laughs> is all I can really say. Um, so this is now two sort of big names are confirmed to be leaving Motherwell this season. Uh, Declan Gallagher is leaving for Aberdeen. And it's not known where Alan Campbell is going yet. However, uh, there was talks with regards to his contract um, and potentially re re signing on a new a new deal. Um, but it has came out uh, it came out this morning that Alan Campbell is uh, definitely leaving Motherwell, and that has been now confirmed by uh, Graham Alexander. I've seen uh, it was Millwall. This isn't obviously for sure. I mean, there'll be much more 
interest for him down south, especially. But uh, I see Millwall was one of the names. Um, yeah, um, I'm reading that uh, Millwall and also Hibs have been linked. Um, yep, linked with Portress as well. They've obviously, I was saying to Sam earlier, Millwall is obviously a club that's um, got an eye for the Scottish market. They were in for Portress in January, and I think uh, what everyone's saying is with Brexit now, you can't have as many you know young youth players for Europe in your squad. So yep. Scotland's going to be a much bigger market now. Uh, looking at players like Doig, uh, Portress. Um, you know Alan Campbell's um, so yeah um, I wouldn't be surprised if it was like a Millwall or you know any other generic kind of championship club and um, um, I'm also reading that Motherwell won't you know they'll, they'll make a bit of money from this deal a 500,000 development uh, d- development fee will be due to mm. Motherwell as compensation um, that's if, still decent when he moves elsewhere which you know, it, it's probably I mean, it's Decent, but when you look at the sort of caliber that Alan Campbell is, he's yeah. either on par with or slightly above. I would say David Turnbull. And and you look at how much he got for Turnbull, you know, like yeah. Alan yeah, Campbell. You know. In my honest opinion, is probably worth anywhere in the region of one point seven five to two point five million. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um. So to get five hundred k from is a bit of a kick in the nut. Um, but at least you're a contract. So at least it's no completely for free though. I mean, you're still getting. I mean, five hundred k is still for a club like Motherwell. That's still a big ish fee. Um, the annoying. So. The annoying thing for us is, is like Alan Campbell, Jake Casey, and David Turnbull are all products of Motherwell youth, youth development. So, um, the thing that annoys me is the fact that so Jake Casey signed for Rangers, and we got a £300,000 development fee for him. But Turnbull knew that there would be interest in for him, so renew these contracts so that we could get maximum funds for him. Aye. Alan Campbell's just ran his contract out and we're now going to get half a million for him. It's like well, three players who support supported the club from like a young age and used to come to all the games. The three yeah. of them used to come together as like pals and that, and it's like Surely you'd want to give the best for the club. And I totally understand that like if, if he signs on a five year deal it detracts attention from him. And it's not always about the player, it's sometimes as the agent as well. Yeah, but... It's also a risk though from his point of view because Alan Campbell could easily sign that new deal. And then imagine, you know, the deals fall through and then that's not what he wants for his career. So I think it's a calculated uh, kind of thing that, you know, it's it'd be it, it would be ideal what David Turnbull did more often. I think Boyle did a similar thing with us in that he was meant to be or there was speculation obviously about him at the start of the season but he signed his new deal so it kind of waved it away and it means we'll get a bigger fee from the future so it, it's obviously it's a nice thing to see from your players but it's just not always possible even when they are um, or when they do have like a connection with the club um, as a I supporter, mean you know. I'll move away from the Alan Campbell thing and I'll go on to the sure. Declan Gallagher thing sure yeah um, there's a lot of the Motherwell fan base currently just now are kind of against Declan Gallagher. It's like everyone's just turned on him saying like his heart was never in the club and mm. like there's just a load of things like that. He should never be allowed to play another game this season. And um, my honest response to that is like, fuck off. I get a grip. <laughs> Would you expect it's... like they're footballers, you know? He's he's still a player for the club. That's the thing. He, he's the captain. It's like Motherwell have a captain's car. Um, a captain's car. Curse. Oh, curse! Yeah, right, right. right. Captain's car. Like so, Carl McHugh was captain, and then the season after moved to India, and Peter Hartley was the same. Mm-hmm. Um, Keith Lasley was captain, then retired. So like, there's always just. Everyone who gets the captain's armband at our club tends to have a, an unfortunate thing occur, whether that's a transfer, retirement, or um, they just like. I think that's probably the case. Always a cost for the captain at the club. Um, so I mean, for me, for Gallagher to go to Aberdeen, I understand that a lot of his family's from up north. But it's at the same time, it's not really the best because I, I don't think as a player 
you're going to get the best out of him after Aberdeen. I feel like he would have been better going down south. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he is quite old. It's also because you time. don't want him to play against you. Is that another reason why? I suppose that's the... I mean, that is the other reason. Um, I will agree that the squad needs an overhaul. And it's probably a blessing in disguise um, because it gives you a chance to kind of... You know, he's, he's what, 29, 30? I mean, it, it, yeah, like I say, it gives you a chance to bring in somebody new, lead them in early, and then build your defence around that. Yeah. Um, from our point of view, because that's the same problem we had, or we have uh, had for the last five years. Since the last cup finals, our defence has been the same. We've had McGregor, Gray, Hanlon, Stevenson, and, you know, good that Portis and Doig have come through now, but we've just never really wanted to... I mean, the only centre-backs, uh, actually, yeah, I was going to say... Jackson, but I guess Ambrose as well. It's the only kind of centre backs uh, that have come in in that time in five years, mind, and properly replaced any of them has been Adam Jackson and uh, Effie Ambrose, uh, part of obviously youth players. But it just says like we're no signing a lot of centre backs as, as a club to try and replace these these players that are just too old um, to be playing. I mean, David Gray can't start Premiership games for me. Um, Stevenson, yes, still has it. Hanlon still has it. McGregor been questionable in the past he's come back this season but we're gonna need to look at other options sometime soon whether it be care whether it be McCarthy but I think like I say this is a good thing for you because so other options to on really, the on the yeah. plus side there is players who can cover Declan Gallagher's departure I am not phased about it as much yeah. as Alan Campbell like for me this season I've been more impressed with uh, Bevis McGarvey mm. than I have with Declan Gallagher Exactly. Lamy, I'm still no too keen on, yeah. and I haven't seen enough of uh, Tyler Magloire, I think it is. Magloire. Aye. Yeah. I don't know. I'd say you need an overhaul, but it's it's not the worst. You've, hmm. you've still got players in that squad. But, like, I mean, the problem for me with Alan Campbell is that Alan Campbell has been the only player this season who's kind of had a bit of heart in, heart mm-hmm. in them at times. That's what I've noticed. Every time I've watched you, I've always thought. He's actually caring about his team. He's like the only person I've really seen pipe like really go for it. Do you know if what I mean? we go, if like let's let's say for example we at Parkhead go two goals down, Tony Watt and Alan Campbell were the only players in the park at the time until Liam Kelly came in, um, that were kind of pick the heads up and try and motivate the team to get back into it. But everyone else's heads yeah, dropped. Yeah, totally. Yeah. There was yeah. a lot of times where people said Alan Campbell should be captain of Motherwell because he's just motivates that team maybe should, have been. should be captain yeah. but then everyone argues that a forward player should never be a captain because That's they can't rubbish. manage from looking backwards so ah, exactly sometimes it's perceived as being a goalies gig but now nah, i think it should usually be a defender but there's nothing wrong with a striker having it as, as long as they're a big figure in the dressing room i mean it's not always about what they say in the pitch it's about general how they are with players at training and everything it's all the wee things and as long as he's a big figure in the club then why not have it as a forward player? I mean, isn't it isn't it Naismith at Hearts? Am I right in thinking? Or no, it was Berra, but must be yeah. No, it's no, it's Naismith. Um, I'm not yeah. too sure, but yeah. Um, I think to to change Motherwell, obviously, you probably had one of your worst seasons in a while because you went from what, sitting third like the year before. Uh, I think you just definitely need a couple of them players that can like get like players motivated for before a game. I don't know if it's on the training field as well. It's not so much motivational players that we're needing. It's more like we need players who can supply but can also yeah, yeah. drive. Yeah, um, you need some really, really good quality players, obviously, on, need, on the budget as well. Yeah. I think we need wingers. Like, yeah. We've, we brought in Stephen Lawless, and he hasn't played much because mm-hmm. he's still coming back to an injury. And I've been kind of like, you're all right. You're no amazing, but you're all right. And then... But it seems to be it's like balls from the midfield into Tony Watt or Devante Colgate. And I think I, I, I think it's, you need know, a player that 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 is not scared of like taking on a man and can go past like a young, fast, quick player that can obviously have a cross on him. Obviously to the likes of Devante Cole, this, I think. The, this was the promised in Sherwood Seedorf and Jermaine Hilton. These were the two players that kind of done that. For yeah. Us. And then eventually, Ro- uh, Rolando Arons on loan from Newcastle was. Mm-hmm that player was the player that was like, I'll take on three or four of these. Yeah. Um three or four of these defenders and then I'll come I'll come back into the game. But for um 
like this season, it's kind of been balls from the midfield to the strikers. Yeah, but yeah. our midfield's not quick enough to do that, and we've been getting caught in the counter. Um, so I, I'd like to see kind of. I don't mind Sherwin Cedar. The problem is, is he's that quick that sometimes he doesn't realise what he's doing. So yeah, yeah. as he drives forward, yeah, he's got pace, but he will go past the defence and he's so easy to offside trap, like so easy. Um, and then on the other side, it's been the occasional Jake Hasty, who I haven't been too impressed with, to be honest with you. I think going on loan moves from Rangers has totally killed his confidence um, mm. and he's never started for Motherwell whereas you go back two seasons he was consistently starting for us Yeah. so what I'd like is two new wingers I'd love to try and hold on to Liam Kelly if we can um, we've still got Stephen O'Donnell we've still got Bevis Mugabe and there's, a, a, there's still a good bit of depth in that squad it's just now trying to get in players that kind of get us the end product. We've not been too bad. I don't think defence has been too shabby this season. It's just that where we leak a goal, we can't get a goal back. Um, yeah, we've, we've had that as well at United. Uh, it was just we'd lose a bottle after it. it yeah. It's kind of like that old Celtic mentality. You know what everyone used to say? You get a goal against Celtic under Rodgers, they break. <laughs> they shatter. Um... And that's kind of like what Motherwell is just now. You put a goal past Motherwell, we shatter because there's no style to go forward. There's no one to get past defenders. And you're just looking for a key ball to be played from the midfield in towards a striker. Uh, the, the only grace is, is that Devante Cole's a quick striker. He's a fast player. Tony Watt is not a fast player. He's kind of like your, your Harry Kane, I suppose, your kind of clinical finisher. He's just there to score the goal, but he's not going to take on six players to score that goal. Um, but I mean that kind of concludes it. All I want wingers and some some players to strengthen up the squad, um, and hopefully that 500k for Alan Campbell. And I'm hoping we get some money for Gallagher. Although I can see this being a free transfer. Still yeah. cashing in the money from David Turnbull. Um, however, the club just announced that we're going to give out season tickets for free. To anyone who bought a season ticket last season. That's, that's um, mental. That's mental. It is mental. Um, Unbelievable. So I'll give you I'll give you the, the season ticket statistics from last season. Oh, can I quickly jump in on that? Do you know you seen the thing that Motherwell did about um offering them uh, was it Motherwell offering it but like if you bought one for this season you get one next season? Uh that's just what I was I was saying there. It's so it's free season tickets. Um, for anyone who bought one last season. So last season we sold. I'm just trying to get it up. Um, I've got here so about three thousand eight hundred. It was about three thousand eight hundred, and a season ticket to Motherwell is roughly, depending on what stand you sit on. I'll go with the stand I'm normally in, which is which is the East Stand. Is three hundred and thirty pounds. So if you're shifting three thousand of them, you're looking quite a like a good few thousands of pounds. Um, mm. We were talking about this even before breaking. we started. So if you're... You know, is that gonna affect your income a wee bit? Um, but I think it just depends if you're getting a big fee for any um, player that's going out, which we've said that we're going to team, develop into. See, that's the cheapest stand at Motherwell, right? So if you're going with that, it's like... Okay, so if you're going on that statistic that it's the cheapest stand at Motherwell and this is the average adult price, so obviously they're saying we're giving season tickets to every every van. That's not including your over-65 concessions, your students, your under-18s and your like 5 to 15-year-olds, I think it is, or something. Yeah, totally, yeah. Um, but even then, that's still 1.25 million. <laughs> um, of, yeah, it's a lot yeah. of fucking money. It's a lot of money. Um, so I don't know where the club's got the money from, and I don't know if it's maybe just, well, we haven't really spent much of the money from the sales this season. We haven't mm -hmm. signed anyone, really. It's all yeah. been loan spells. And we're still kind of holding on to that Turnbull money. 
Um, there's been a lot of work this season put into redevelopment of the, the ground. So there's been a massive overhaul of the East Stand. Um, they have replaced all the seating. Yeah. They've got a new PA system in. Um, because the PA system that used to be in the East Stand was actually the old public address system for Glasgow Airport before it was redesigned. And um, it was basically bought at an auction. So it had been in there, I think, since like the 80s or the early 90s, basically. Um, got a fan, like a fan mural sort of thing going on. There's like a history about John Hunter, who the stand's named after. Uh, contactless options at the kiosks and yeah. kind of di- digital boards in the kiosks and we've also now removed a, a big bit of the seating at the front so it's reduced the capacity but I think it's to try to get a safe standing zone they're talking they talked about safe standing but I'm not sure I think safe I think safe standing is a is a good thing to bring in across Scotland it, you know yeah. increases the capacity and gets more fans in so absolutely I mean, I would have, see see if they took Block E of the East Stand, which is where all the sort of all the ultras kind of go. Mm. If they would made that safe stand, then it would be great because no one really sits down to watch the football. No, exactly. You're jumping section. with your banners. Yeah, they stand up anyway, jumping, and singing. With it improves banners. the it atmosphere. Just... I mean, you should get more people into those. Like, I mean, that's where like the season tickets sit and stuff. Like the hardcores. So, like, it gets more people in. I don't see a problem with that. So, like. A lot of people ask why have you took this bit out the out the front, like why have you took all like sort of the first three rows of seating away to make this big gap, and they basically said it's because it's to reduce the risk of injury when <laughs> the fans run down the stairs, yeah, um, which is a very common thing, um, you know, just it's just limbs really, it's just to help with limbs, but um, I mean, I would I would have took safe standing at the at the east stand, um. But they never really said anything about it. They just said we've replaced all the, the old seats. Um, mm-hmm. And mainly this is because half those seats were broken from people jumping on them. Aye. <laughs> um, but I, I, I can't wait to get back and just see what's been done. Um, mm. that's, that's all it is. And I think we can all agree on that. You can't, you can't, I can't wait to get back to a stadium. I can't wait um, to see your uh, big screens that you throw to the fin. <laughs> <laughs> can't wait to see your fan zone. Um, oh, yeah. Should we um, yeah. time to quiz? Uh, yeah, we'll yeah. move on, to, move a, on from there. to a quiz. Yeah, yeah, jeez, quiz already. Sounds good. A quiz, the quiz. Me quiz. <laughs> <laughs> Who's done the quiz? I think it's Lewis, is it? So, I've done it this yes. week. Um, kind of just a mishmash of questions. Um, okay, from across all uh, three leagues because anything kinda... about top scorer in the championship. So yeah, there was a question about the top scorer in, um, so there was a question about the top scorer in the Scottish Championship, and what's now happened is that Andy decided to, before the podcast was, uh, begin to get recorded. Uh, Andy went, "Oh, Liam Boyce has scored fourteen goals this season," and I was like, "Well, thanks for ruining my question." But you know, it's uh, a safe bet, though. Liam Boyce or Naismith or, Aye. Anyway, I probably would have instantly got that anyway. So. Oh. Right, um, but I will get started. Mm-hmm. So, uh, question one is, how many managerial changes have there been across all four Scottish leagues this season? Uh, yeah. These are by mutual oh, consent, God. resignation or sacking, so I'm not including contract expiry, right. uh, compassionate leave, or there... 18. staff swaps. 18. 14. 15. 21. I don't think it's been that many, by the way. 15. 10, maybe? 9. Yeah, I don't don't think it's been that many. I mean, it's been too many because. Kelly, Kelly, you're probably. You got McInnes, Lennon. uh, Then you got both uh, Alex Dyer and James Fowler for both for Kelly. You got Uh, Stephen Robinson at Motherwell. Uh, I think most of them have been Premiership ones, haven't they? Gary Hall. Afford to sack. Um, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm going to Stuart say Kettlewell nine. got sacked as well, so I'm going to say nine. Ah, fuck, you said nine. Nope. Eight. 
No, there's are more. We, we as, double more? as double figures. As okay. double figures. 15. So it's, it's 16. Is it, in, is it in the teens? 15. It's in the teens. 15. Um, oh, it's uh, 13. Marcus, you've got it. Oh. Oh. Marcus just guesses every number quicker than us. Um, <laughs> right. Now, the next bit of it is name the clubs. Okay. Celtic Aberdeen. and Aberdeen. Right. Uh, Motherwell. Killy. Andy, you've got Killy. Livingston. Aberdeen, Motherwell. Livingston Name and clubs. Ross County. That's all the Prem sides. So one, right. two. So all the clubs. Um, three, Andy's got four, every five, single six. Six, There's six side. Prem clubs because half the clubs have swapped managers. I. Uh, so, so um, Andy, you've got six, six there. Andy, you've got six there for Neil Lennon at Celtic. Uh, Alex Dyer at Kelly, Kettlewell, Ross County, Gary Holt at Levy, Stephen Robinson, Motherwell, and Derek McInnes at Aberdeen. Right. And Gary Holt at Levy, did you say that one? Yeah. No, I've said Holt, yeah, Gary Holt. Um, so now you're down into the Championship League One and League Two. Oh, who, there was the Cali Thistle manager because he fell out with Todorov and he, he got sacked. Wasn't this season. Was it not this oh, season? Oh, um, oh wait, do, do, so does mutual consent no count? Uh, aye, no, aye, so it's got to be by mutual consent, resignation, right. or stacking. Is so Falkirk Len one? Len Lennon was a resignation. Dyer was a mutual consent. Kettlewell was sacked. Holt was, I'm mutual sure, was sure. resignation Robinson. or mutual consent. Robinson's resignation and McInnes's mutual consent. I know that. Yeah, yeah Holt, uh, aye, Holt was mutual consent. So Greenwich, Greenwich was one of the teams, I think. Yep. So ah, he was, yeah. Is, is, is Falkirk one? Who was it that said Falkirk there? Me. Kyle. Yeah. Um, yep, there you go. Didn't... Aloha. Aloha. Of course, Aloha, they sacked. Yeah. They oh. finished Did rock bottom. They sacked the manager. Well? So Aloha's not on the list. Really? They must have st stuck with their manager. Uh, are both? Are both's not there? Air United. Air United is one, Andy. Nah, because they. I'm just thinking of teams that the bots floating around the bottom of the championship. Uh, uh, four for half a point. Um, four for the bottom, aren't they? Oh, was it four for? Sam will give you that for four for. Peterhead. Nope. There's three more clubs to get. Um, I think Partick Thistle sacked their manager rules. and then got promoted, right? Do Kelly Hearts league. have a change, by the way? Aye, they're not in the top four leagues, though. No. I know, but like, I'm just thinking, Riffin, because yeah. I knew it was a dispute with the, the, the guys above them. Um, is Stenhouse Muir one? Stenhouse Muir is one, Kyle. Does um, Edinburgh City count? No. Uh, Clyde FC? Nope. You're oh, Queen of, Queen of the South. Uh, no, sorry, Queen's Park's manager's just yeah, quit. Yeah, Queen's Park, yeah, yeah. He just quit today, actually. Is, is, yeah. is this updated, or...? So, so that was in, and I, that was today. But I made the quiz before that had happened. Ah, okay. Because um, he he quit uh, to take a job with another club. What are we missing? You're there missing two, two clubs, and I am sure one is. Mm. I think they're both League Two. Breakin. Oh yeah, Breakin yeah. Breakin. Uh, Albion oh, Rovers. And Ka can be Annan. Sterling Albion. Sterling Kyle, Albion. Kyle's got the Albion Rovers one. Now. Come on. Is that last one? And that's us. There you go. Very so nice. 13 seconds, Celtic, Kelly, County. That's Levy. low, Not but I think because, you know, teams don't want to pay their managers for like a pay, pay out their managers for COVID and stuff. Especially, yeah, especially in COVID when teams haven't got as much money. So Yeah, so that's that one. Right, so the original question here was who's the top goal scorer in each of the four leagues and how many goals do they have? Uh, but it's now three leagues because Andy got the championship one earlier. Oh, was the top of this. Uh, Edward, Edward with sixteen yeah. for the Premiership. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure Gary got the Edward one there first. Yeah. Oh, really? All right. Yeah, yeah. Um. So how many goals has Edward got this season? Uh, eighteen. Good question. Sixteen. Sixteen. Uh, no. No. Oh, uh, seventeen. Seventeen, Marcus. Oh, I said eighteen. Oh. oh, way man. Okay. Can you get the top goal scorer in League One? Is it, uh, is it a Cove player? It is a Cove Rangers player. But I don't know any Cove Rangers players. I know. Oh, man. That's a well guess because I don't know who else plays for them. Keatings, I think, five is there. 
I know one player from Cove Rangers. Which is? Mitchell Menningson. Gary's got, I think that's Gary, that's Gary, isn't it? That's Kyle. Yeah, yeah it's Kyle. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> That's you get that. I think I've had, Kyle, you got that. It is Mitch Meganson or Mitchell Meganson. Um, yeah. How many I goals? was thinking of like, for League Two, I think it's Simon Murray. It's not Simon Murray for League Two. Oh, I, th- I think, I think, I think it's he's got to be a Queen's Park player, right? I want to see. It's actually an Elgin City player. Oh, no clue then. <laughs> Absolutely no clue. I might have an idea here. I'm trying to think. Uh, the only guy I know, because he's got a funny name, is Connor O'Keefe. But I think he plays as a winger for Elgin. But I only remember because uh, when we were watching Edinburgh City play, he fucking scored against Edinburgh City. Uh, yeah. But Connor O'Keefe is the only Elgin City player I know at all. And it's because people were chanting O'Keefe, O'Keefe at him. So... <laughs> That's uh, my only sake. guess that I can make. Hey, did you did you want the top scorer for the um, League Two? Yeah, top scorer yeah. for League Two. Yeah. So it's an Elgin part of it. It's this guy I only remember because he's got like a name that's like what's the onomatopoeia? It's got like the same letter. Am I right? If I'm thinking that. What? No, no, like no. Onomatopoeia just... is when you say a word that sounds like a, a noise, like no, bang no, or that, crash. No, no, that was wrong. It's like it's like um, that's the one. That's the one. Alliteration. Alliteration. I think it's like oh, I think it's that like... would be the League One one uh, with Mitch Meganson. But um, no, thought I was onto something. I was getting there. Ah, yeah, I'm not too sure. So uh, there's that Nigerian guy or something that plays for Elgin who always gets racially abused every match. But I, I know he'd scored quite a few goals this season. He is a Scottish player, that's all I can give you. Okay. No idea. Has he, has he played in the Premiership? I will need to take transfer market for that one. Because <laughs> uh, he doesn't have a Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he doesn't have a Wikipedia. Yeah, he probably hasn't. Uh... <laughs> just tell us, uh, and we're not going to so get it out. I'm right. just on here. He has played for... Our bro. Yeah. And yeah. then his debut for Elgin City was a Well, they only played like four games in League Two, right, this season, pretty much. Like half the half the teams haven't like fully played a full season, right? Yeah, uh, pretty pretty much. Um so it says on the website that his debut for City was against Hibs in the Scottish Cup fourth round in twenty nineteen. All right. Um, nah, we won't get this. We'll be here for ages. <laughs> we'll be here for all night. Yeah. So it's uh, it's Kane Hester who is the oh, top yeah, scorer for I was, I was gonna say we've been here so long that Gary's already left. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's died of old age. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually gone. Yeah, he's got a bounce. Um, oh, I've got his. Uh, I've got his. Um, uh, got his transfer marked up. Kane Hester is brother of Lloyd Hester, who plays for Montrose Juniors. <laughs> oh, great, great there facts there. Great facts. <laughs> that, that's his only. No- that's the only notable thing about him. It's the only notable thing about him. I forget that. Like Le- so, League Two, they called the season after like four games. No, Le- League Two, they so still. They- League Two, they finished the season. Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but they did. They're counting the playoffs and stuff as well, despite calling the season early, right? Yeah, so they only played eighteen games. Oh, sorry, twenty-two games this season. Yeah, which is so. Less than do you want to go for the goal tallies for uh, Mitch Meganson and Kane Hester? I'm gonna guess just like, like five and fifteen or something like that. No, no, they can't score that many goals. It'll be about right. five or six. Sam, that I'll give be. you the fifteen for Kane Hester. Oh, because they played, they played what? They've played pretty much a full season in League Two. So oh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna guess. guess fourteen. I'm just gonna guess fourteen. Kyle, fourteen. Oh, there you uh, go. Double points from Mitch Meganson. Right. Nice. So, um, who scored the first hat trick in the Premiership this season? Oh, Kevin Edward. Nisbet. <clears throat> no, he started off terrible. Uh, yeah. Kevin Doidge or something. Wait, the Marcus say Edward? No, I said Kevin no. Nisbet. I said Edward. Did you? Oh, Sam, you said Edward. It is oh, Edward. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. Edward. Oh, no yeah, way. Edward. Really? Wow. Oh, was it against Hamilton for 30 seasons? Marcus, that was my next question. Um, um, there you go. As well, who was against Hamilton Ackies? Hamilton Ackies. 
Wow. Who won Player of the Month most times this season? Uh, bonus point for how many times they won. Morelos and um, four. No, it's um, no. Tierney and three. Ta- Tavernier. James Tavernier four. Not Tierney, Tavernier. What? That's what I meant to say. That's what I said. James Tavernier four. <laughs> Why did I say Tierney? Andy, I'll give you it for James Tavernier, but you didn't get the time right. The amount of times they've won it right. Four, three, four, two, five. No, it's got to be. It's got to be more. He scored Seven. so many times. In, 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 in this season. In this season. Yeah. Two. 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 Oh, it's two. Because there was that. I thought it could be four or five. Because there was that season Harry Kane won it like four times. So he's won it twice, and then it's alternated between um, a lot of different players. I can give you the full rundown if you'd like. Oh no! Can we guess them? Uh, Morelos won one because he uh, he apparently I read an article about how he broke it, so they gave him a second one. Martin Boyle. Um, So I'm not gonna um. So I'm not gonna give you the points for this, but uh, Tavernier is one. Mm. Morelos is one. Lafferty has won this month. Martin Boyle. Nisbet? Nope. Uh, uh, Edwards. Edwards Turnbull. probably won one. Turnbull. Turnbull and Edwards. Yeah. The so. other players are English and Scottish, respectively. English and Scottish. Uh, who's Devante English that plays for Rangers? Kent. Kent is one. Uh, Kent. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, another. So there's another Rangers player and then a Livingston player. A Rebo. Ryan no. Jack. Alan Stubbs in Queen's Park manager frame. Sorry, that just popped out now. <laughs> nope. Uh, it's not Alan Stubbs, another Rangers, for sure. Rangers player. Another Rangers player. English. English. Who? Oh, um, is that come up? Yeah, it's Aribo. No, I said, I said Aribo. Oh, oh, right. uh, Ruth. Not Ruth either. Defoe. 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 Nope. Oh. Gosh, you've got a lot of English. Uh, it's Connor Goldson. Ah, uh, yeah, of course. Goldson, I forget uh, half your squad's English. And then yes. your last, so your last player is uh, Scottish and plays for Livingston. Mm. Uh, Robinson. Yeah. Robinson. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Thank right. you. Points so, for me. <laughs> do, do, do. so that's Scott Robinson, I. Scott yes. Robinson, yeah. yeah. Right. One with the awful uh, haircut. I no, he's got a baldy now. Oh, does he? So, oh, it's better yeah. than what he had before. Yeah, no, he, he did have a terrible trend before. Right, so Rangers will make a return to the UEFA Champions League next season. Mm-hmm. But who is their all-time top goal scorer in the competition with a bonus point for the number of goals they've scored? Ali, Ali McCoist with 13. Ali McCoist, but it's not 13 goals. 12. Ali McCoist with 8. It is double figures. All right, uh, Ali McCoist. Because I, I thought Henrik Larson had won more than him, and Henrik Larson's got 14, but maybe it counts qualifying as well, so maybe like I 20, can, 21? I can tell you for a fact that Larson has scored less goals than Alan McCoy in the Champions League. Champions League, or is it, is it counting in European Cup as well? Because McCoy's retired it, in like the late 90s, right? I I'm, sure, I'm sure he scored almost, almost 30. Yeah, I, I think it's like in the high 20s. Like 28 or something like that. Because uh, remember, they counted Morelos as qualifying goals to tie with high, him, so I think it's 21. It's the, so, according to UEFA's website, it's in the high teens. High teens. 19. Because if, if you count qualifying, it's 21, I think. Because yeah. Morelos is tied with him now. No, he scored uh, more. Oh, he scored as he overtaken him. Because yeah. I remember seeing that article. Le- yeah, 19. I don't know. 18. 17. 18. <laughs> 18, okay. 18. Because uh, I know in... in Europe, uh, because Larson has 14 in just the Champions League, not including European Cup and qualifiers and stuff. I don't know, yeah, yeah, right. Hmm. So, I've got four players here, there could be more, okay, okay. But what Manchester United players have also played for Hibs? George Best, George Best, David David Gray, oh, yeah, David Gray, of course, George Best Um, and David Gray, and that's where. That's where I'm stumped a wee bit now. Um, Two points. Yeah, how do you think? Oh, dear. Come on, Mark. This uh, should John... be your question. <laughs> well, those are the two I know. Um... Uh, Michael Stewart, no? Michael Stewart, Kyle. Damn. Oh. Uh... There's one more. John McGinn in the future no. when he signs it's not for Tony Butcher. Tony never played for Man United. Um... No, he managed Hibs. Um... 
countries. Uh, so I can give you other. Is, is, uh, is it someone that went through the United Youth team and then like joined Hibs as their first club? Because there's like a lot of players that did that with like Celtic and stuff, like Liam Miller and all that. No, he actually came through. The, well, he sort of started in the Hearts youth system and then went into the Man U youth system. Then he oh, and a, then played for Hibs. A season at Man U, didn't make an appearance, and then made 52 appearances for Hibs before moving to Limerick. Uh, then Gillingham, oh, uh, Danny City. Galbraith. Danny Galbraith. Oh, my God. He played Oh, he played for Edinburgh City. Yeah, he's a winger, well. yeah. He's, he's got York. a fantastic oh. goal against Queen's Park. Couple of yeah, we were at we were at that one. I yeah, four nil. Oh it? fuck, yeah, it was four nil. We saw that game. Um, okay. How many different nationalities are in Motherwell squad? Scottish, um, English, Northern Irish. How many? How many? Not leaving. Oh, oh, many. oh sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, eight, eight. One, two. Three, no. Six, six. six. Got, six. No, because you've got you um... got Seedorf, Mugabe. Uh, I'm trying yeah. to think of the ones that definitely are British. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, so, Irish. It's, right, it's, a, it's a nationalities, so you need to get the yeah. six nationalities. I said, uh, both. I said oh, six. Six. English, Scottish, 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 Irish, and, and Northern Irish. Irish. Oh God, off and Zimbabwe. Wait, Andy, English. So Scottish. English, Scottish, Northern Irish, and Irish. Northern Irish, Irish. And then and we've Ugandan got like two and, um Sam was saying something. Ugandan, and is it Suriname for Sadoff, or is it Netherlands? Is Suriname? Is Suriname? No, it, he's uh, yes, um, oh, it's, I, I was gonna say yes, Suriname. I thought Seedorf played. Yeah, see, he's classed as Netherlands on as far as like Wikipedia has yeah. gone. I, but he, he I guess if he's not declared, yeah. Ah, he yeah. says he's a Dutch professional footballer. Yeah, because he, yeah. he could have played for both. I think. Uh, Lewis, can I ask you something? Who's who's getting the points for saying six? Because I said it before, Andy. I no, you didn't. I said it first. No, no uh, Sam, go back there after the recording. Right. I, do have, I do have Kyle down as saying it first. To be yes. Clear. I Come do. On. And then I've got Andy for the Irish nationalities, nor, uh, Scotland, England. No, but Marcus I, said Scottish well, English I, I first. Listed, I listed them all off at the start. So. No, you said Scottish English Welsh. I said Scottish English, Northern Irish, and Irish. So, I said, right, no, so, I said Scottish right, English, Northern Irish. Oh, right, good to be here, Andy. <laughs> yeah. Andy, you get two points for both Ireland. I'll take two points. Scotland and England goes to Marcus, and then the Netherlands and Uganda goes to Sam. Hey. You I'm know what? Uh... Last year. <laughs> right. My next question: What five? What five Scottish clubs? Point for each club are currently mm-hmm. members of the European Clubs Association. Celtic Rangers. Celtic Rangers, Hibs, Aberdeen, Hearts. So Celtic, Hibs, Aberdeen, Celtic Kilmarnock. Rangers goes to Marcus. You said Aberdeen, Hearts, Andy? Yeah. Yep. And I said Hibs as well, but if they're not an answer, I said Kelly. Hibs are not an answer, and Kelly's Dundee not an United. answer either. Oh. Not Dundee United. Regular Dundee. Dundee FC. S- nope. St. Johnston. Uh, not St. Mother Johnston. Well. Mother St. Well. Motherwell. It's Motherwell. Oh, no. I heard Marcus say that though. Why? Well, I thought Hibs would be, but I guess they're all. Why are, why are the Jambos? Yeah, I, was quite, I was quite surprised as well. I thought it would be the top five teams in yeah. Scotland. You would assume so. Which to me top is four in Hearts, I think you mean. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, top four in Hearts. But, like, I thought it would be the two Edinburgh clubs, Aberdeen, the two Glasgow clubs. I did yeah. not think Motherwell would yeah, be in no. it. In terms of, yeah, five, because usually if it's anything to do with European, they just do it on stadium size. So I thought it would be that, yeah. So they they would be the five biggest stadiums in Scotland, Pataudry, yeah. um, Ibrox, Parkhead, Easter Road and Tynecastle. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Aberdeen manager Stephen Glass recently was snapped up from Atlanta United's B team. Yeah. But what position do Atlanta United's A team currently sit in the NLS? Uh, it's a, it's something not... weird because the MLS has just started, isn't it? it only well, started like a... started. Yeah, Eastern is it? In, is it in the Eastern Conference, I or is it overall? So they're in an overall league this season. There isn't a conference. Right. Wait, is it Atlanta United? Atlanta United. Yeah. Atlanta United. Right. Uh, well, they're they're quite good in that league, so I'll say second. Uh, 
Oh no, wait, sorry, they are in a conference. I do apologize. It, uh, I know they're mid table, so like in the Eastern Conference. Who who did it? who's the team that did a rebrand? Is it Montreal? Because I saw Atlanta played Montreal yeah. the other day, Montreal. and uh, it was they. They're, I feel yeah, like they're Montreal's dead on points. Bad. Montreal's new so patch is weird. I hate it. Uh, I'll, it's like a snowflake. Um, let's just so say Montreal seventh because it's my lucky number. Montreal Impact, and now they are like they just Montreal. 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 Montreal snowflakes. Yeah, <laughs> I'll say seven because it's my lucky number. They are seven, I, Andy. How oh. many teams are in each conference? So there's 14 teams in the Eastern Conference and 13 teams in the Western Conference. They're, they're so does that mean there's a new team going to join the Western then next season or something? I'm sure they're talking about that. Oh, yeah. Houston Dynamo have rebranded their badge as well. Yeah, there's a lot of rebrands. Like um, Chicago did it a couple of weeks, uh, a couple of years ago. Oh, as well. they're, they're just really hated Chicago's. It's almost as if they're brands and not football clubs. Uh, Columbus, uh, uh, Columbus Crew have done it. As who well. is who's who's Austin FC? They have a new team. Where, why, where, where are these teams coming from? It's the MLS. Making... They're like, like adding teams left, right, and centre to make it. Aust- like a... Austin, Austin are so new that if you check their like uh, recent games, they're playing teams like Louisville City and stuff. Like because it, their recent games are all shown before their MLS games ever happen. I'm sure they got fired up from the US Soccer League, like the US. Yeah, yeah they fire teams. Well, up a lot of just... teams like Nashville and uh, what was the other one? Uh, Cincinnati, Cincinnati, they came up from that. Yeah, they pull teams up and then they also like make new teams, but then they don't have promotion relegation, which is stupid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. There's the oh, Seattle Sounders are two are more really questions to go. Okay. Yeah, this is a Queens quiz. Park are moving into a new ground. Where is the ground, and what will the capacity be upon renovation? Right next to Hamden, it's Mini Hamden or whatever, Lesser Hamden. It's... Yeah, lower Hamden. Hamden. You, lower New Hamden, Hamden. Lesser capacity, Hamden, Lower Hamden is going to be four thousand. Two thousand. Oh, I'll give Mar- right. I'll give Marcus the bit for the saying Lesser Hamden. Well, saying ne- right next to Hamden. Um, um, and... Is it like it's no? It's not as big as four thousand. It's like two thousand or one thousand five hundred somewhere. No, it's that not. Ballpark. No, it's not. It's going to be something like I'll six or a, seven. No, somewhere. I will give Andy. It's, it it, I'm sure. I'm sure Andy's it's like he's got it to the nearest thousand. I will no. say that. Has he? He has. It's going to be seventeen seventy four. Oh, because so obviously that's when they found were founded. I thought it was. I thought it was like twelve thousand. So no, the, they're they're discussing like it's came out. They're going to make it a a one thousand seven hundred and seventy four seat stadium. So uh, is that? So is it just like a one big stand kind of thing? You know, like it's got the one stand, it's got walls on four sides for like standing. Is that like standing capacity or sitting capacity? I think this is what it's going to do. So, because ownership of the main stadium is now under the SFA. Yeah. uh, And Queen's Park lease has expired on the 20th mm-hmm. of March, and they're currently ground sharing at Falkirk until they finish off Lesser Hamden. I, cause, no, because Lesser Hamden already existed. It's by uh, Mount Florida train station. Uh, the, and it's just like a, it's next to the next to the bowling green. So I assume they're renovating that site then. So or is it the training renov- park behind so Hamden that they're building? They're work basically in the off season. Yeah. And then I think they have to start playing games at Lesser Hamden from the 22 20- right. 20 started 21 22 season okay yeah. i mean um, it makes yeah it makes far more sense than playing at hamden but yeah when because when we went to hamden it's, sport... it's a bit weird for them though because like it's well bit... the away support always outnumbers the home support for them so it's weird if you're at hamden yeah but it's it's that way as well that it's like there's 50 it's a fifty one thousand seater stadium for a league two club yeah only like 200 people go now a league now a league one now a league one club yeah club um Right, next bit. So, my final question. Motherwell right back Stephen O'Donnell performed one of the greatest shithousing moments of the 2021 season by undertaking training sessions with which club prior to signing for Motherwell? Hamilton. (laughs) Hamilton. (laughs) Really? (laughs) I didn't even know that story. (laughs) I figured it would be be Hamilton because rivalry. So, the story basically went that he refused to sign a new deal with Kilmarnock and expecting a lot of like big 
championship teams to come in from basically or like lower English league sides mm. um, that never happened he was basically in limbo so in an attempt to kind of just keep his fitness up he just was doing training sessions with Hamilton Ackies until an offer came in for him and then obviously Motherwell kind of took him after doing training yeah. sessions at Hamilton brilliant yeah. <laughs> but that concludes the quiz I just need to talk up the points um, the manager question is half a point because of the number of managers there was mm-hmm. so if you just give me a little second um, obviously Gary had to leave halfway through the quiz so yeah. um, unfortunately the Gary's... Gary's points I'll, I'll, I'll adopt them yeah, well, I really you will aye, aye. <laughs> he hasn't really took any anyway um so I will go so so Gary unfortunately Gary's null and void. Um Marcus, you have the suspense. Oof. So Marcus, you're on twelve points. Okay. Well yeah. done, Marcus. Well done. And he's gonna Andy. win this one again, isn't he? Probably. Tim or Andy, I think. Oh no wait, Gary has one point, so I will I will give Gary one point. Um, Legend. just for reasons of I don't want him to be kind of null and void at the same time. Yeah. Andy, you're on eleven point five. Oh, Sam, you're on. Sam, you're on six point five. Not bad. Not and bad. Kyle, yeah. you have. Kyle's also on six point five. Oh. Well, does this mean Marcus has won another quiz? Marcus get thirteen. Total. Marcus was on in the thirteen, yeah, and then. Oh, uh, well, Sam, uh, that. Sorry, it's not so. Andy, you got eleven point five, and then Andy, that's shocking. Kyle and uh, <laughs> Kyle and Kyle and Sam are on a tie, so it's joint third for you guys, and then uh, Andy second, and yeah, Marcus has won another quiz. Marcus only wins because he talks fast like Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> you just oh. shout over everyone, Andy. <laughs> It's because I got the right answers. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be so much easier post COVID when we can get back into a studio because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. get a little everyone. notepad. Right. I'm yeah. Just get little buzzers. Yeah, so, like the wee white boys you got in primary back. school, just show and tell, <laughs> all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, did you see McBurney's been arrested? Yeah. I, I did. Yeah. <laughs> For smacking fifteen-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> what? I didn't really. Did you not awesome. see the video? So there was some some teenagers in Sheffield who were like shouting at him, going, "Hey, McBurney, McBurney!" And so he uh, he runs after them and he grabs the phone off the boys filming him and he starts kicking the boy, but the boys filming, so he got it all on camera. And then <laughs> McBurney tries to stomp on his phone, obviously to like create the evidence. But well, that's his career. Stamp on the his phone, you're not really yeah. going to. Uh, I think his career was down the toilet when he scored zero goals this season, Marcus. <laughs> I mean, somehow he's managed to con his way into playing for a Premier League club for a season. And Scotland. Is true. And yeah, and his national team. Ah, he's picked up 12 All national caps sponsor. this year. Nah, he shouldn't be the Scotland squad at all. Nah, nah absolutely never. not. Nah. Right. Um, I'm just, I'm just going to watch it then now, like, while we're... Yeah, should we move on to predictions in the meantime? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, well, we just need to add to the ones from before, don't we? Yes. Yeah, so there were uh, games on Wednesday and the last pod, uh, me, Marcus and Carl already predicted those, but we'll run through them mm. again. Um, Lewis and Andy, you can add your ones on as well. Um, so, Carl, have you got the, the, the thing up? So, cause I, can't remember I what do, yes. I, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take it over this time. So Lovely the first action. game is Dundee United against Hibs. Yes. Wait, those were done. Those, those first two those were done. Those are done. So okay. We move so on. <laughs> I need to actually update them. Uh, so we've got uh, the first game I've got on my list, apart from those two, was uh, is Livingston against Rangers on Wednesday. 3 0 Rangers. 2 uh, 1 Rangers, I think. Uh, Livy, I'll give him a good go, but I don't think they'll manage. I can't remember what I said for these. So. <laughs> We'll just you have, you have to find out. Yeah, I'll find out. <laughs> find out next Wait. week. Yeah. And then we've got uh, Celtics and Johnson. Oh, S- S- Celtics' favorite opposition is actually St. Johnson, so we should see this one out about uh, 
three 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 one three nil. Three nil. I'll go for three nil because St Johnson's worst scoring record's actually against Celtic, so three nil. They're on form though, aren't they? Two one St Johnson. Oh, I can't do that. I we have so, I've, I've sort of gone for similar, to be honest. I think St Johnson are on form, riding a Scottish Cup final high, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they'll go for it against Celtic. And um, that would be it. Really, I think that Celtic will come out strong, score first, but then St Johnson will get the equaliser, and then sort of like a late win, a late winner. Yeah, and then we've got Aberdeen against Hibs. Anyone go first? Jesus. Uh, I'd like to think Hibs would uh, Hibs would win this. I think they'd win it about 3-1. I think Aberdeen are struggling at the moment, but under new leadership. And I think Jack Ross has finally got Hibs firing for, you know, they're looking strong, the strongest they've looked at the end of the season now. All I'm going to say is myself, Sam and Marcus have all predicted draws. Oh, for this game? Yes, because it's, it's always a draw between Aberdeen and Hibs. I think, I, no, Aberdeen got... got there's no good in the last season. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm yeah. saying 3-1. Why'd you, say, why'd you say one each then, Marcus? Because I think this one will be a draw. <laughs> <laughs> right, Lewis. That game. Where is it? He's Aberdeen. Aberdeen. Uh, yeah. 1-1. Fair enough. It's what about... Not, um... It's not tight enough to be a goalless draw. Because yeah. both sides have goals in them, but I don't think anyone's going to get the edge, really. So it'll be a boring 1-1 one, one draw, I think. Yes, moving on to your team, Lewis. We've got Dundee United against Motherwell. One of you is, come on. 1-0 one um, Motherwell. I think 1-0 one one Dundee well. United. One For me, 1-0 one 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 Dundee one United. United. To split the difference. Hmm. Danny, see, when you actually do the predictions, you are unreal. <laughs> Some of them, anyway. Uh, next game is Kilmarnock against St. Mirren. Oh, St. Mirren will do Killian. 4-1. Oh. Yeah, that's the big score for me. St. Mirren will do Killian? Or Killian will do St. Yeah, St. Mirren. Mirren will do Killian. Wow. Okay. 2-0 two, two no, St. Mirren. 2-0 no, St. Mirren. Okay. Uh, I, I think you get towards the end of the season you get these big scoring results so I think I'm, I'm sticking with my 4-1 there we've got Ross County against Hamilton 5-5 <laughs> oh he's pulled it out it's got to be I'm going to pull a 3-3-3 three, a three, three out the bag not not quite a 5-5 five, five, but somebody's got to bite the 5-5 five, five bullet yeah someone needs to <laughs> and then that's all in. I don't know if we get in there I'll, I'll message Gary and we'll get Gary's in as well, so sure. yeah, and there's also games uh, this weekend as well. Uh, those, oh, games, them. Those, games, those games will happen before uh, we record next, and we'll start. I'm honestly gonna run out of room. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> Are you writing it down? Add some more. I've comments. got a big spreadsheet, right? And then I have to go all the way on. I'm on chart P at the moment, right? So I'm gonna have to <laughs> go all the way in, but it's fine. We'll, we'll, move, we'll move. That's my sorry going off. But yeah, no, uh, that's fine. I'll, I'll just keep going when you when you see them. So, yeah. So. Um. So on Saturday it'll be the final games in the top six, and we'll start at with Hibs versus Celtic. Oh. Oh. Two one Hibs. One all Celtic Hibs. One all for me. Um, Hibs. Uh, Hibs is Celtic's bit of a bogey team for them. So. And you're all. saying what? What are you saying? One each. One each. Marcus, what do you say? 2 1 Hibs? 2 1 to the Hibs. I'm also going to agree with Marcus. I'm going to say 2 1 Hibs. I'm going to go with 2 2. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to. The Glasgow branch don't tend to beat us when we're at home, so. <laughs> I mean, okay. Can I, can I just. No, he's right. Uh, our, our away record to Hibs is bad. Go on, Lewis. <laughs> Um, so, I, sorry, I don't want to give my Hibs Celtic prediction just yet. Um, I just want to interrupt and say that uh, the Leicester Man United game has finished. And Man City have won the league, yeah. And Man City have won the league. Uh, oh, wow. Leicester have lost 2 1 to. Uh, sorry, is that, Man United is that... have lost 2 1 to Leicester. 
five league titles in the last ten years for City. After mm. none in like fifty years, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, almost as if uh, you know something. Money, happens. money yeah. talks. Yeah. Here comes the money, Marcus. Who would you, if you had sixty million to drop on a player, who would you sign for Hibs? Bap- no, <laughs> Six, sixty yeah, get, million get, wouldn't even get you Bappy's foot. It'll get you a loan deal potentially. No, his, lo- we... his loan his loan deal from PSG to Monaco was in the hundreds. To be fair, but the thing is, yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't splash it on one player. I'd invest it in what was in a whole squad that was. So you get you get f- ten players for six million each. Uh, yeah, I would actually. And that actually, would probably, yeah, no, that that would probably make you the best squad in the league. That would make us the best squad in the league. So I'd do that rather than go on one player. Don't ask me who I signed for Motherwell because you all know who I'll say. Holland. No, because sixty million is all is the same as oh, yeah. Mbappe. It's only going to yeah, get me Holland's left foot. No, yeah. uh, no, fuck I, it. I'd... I'll sign John again. Fuck it. <laughs> Resign John again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'd do the same. Right, Mbappe. let's yeah, not. It it's a Scottish football podcast. Come on, guys. We've got predictions to predict here. <laughs> I'd bring back Moose and then Bailey. <laughs> He's not getting any game time at Atletico, so... True, but he's about to win the league with them, probably. Mm. It's tight, but I think he'll win it. Mm. Lewis, what's your prediction? Anyway, yeah, Hib Celtic. Hib Celtic. Um, I think... I think... I'm going to say a 1-1 draw. 1-1 um, draw, are you matching mine? Yeah, I'm going to go a 1 1 draw. I think Hibs will score first. And then um, I I, I want, I kind of want Celtic to score um, just because I want Andy to do an impression of the guy at Barnsley when Harvey Barnes scored. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, before I hear Andy go, Ooh, do you need to? (laughs) The. Yeah, go on. I forgot what I was going to say. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Moving on then, uh, we're going to <laughs> head to Ibrox for Rangers versus Aberdeen. 5-0 five, five Rangers. No chance of Aberdeen getting a win to potentially take third off us. So that suits me fine. I think this, is a nil, this has a nil-nil written all over it for me. I think uh, Aberdeen sad off their loss to Hibs are just going to play crab football as usual and Rangers won't be able to break them down because they'll be you know they've they've finished their season so they'll give the young ones a run out probably what what nil nil that's my, my prediction okay no, I am going because it's the last game at home last game of the season yeah oh shit yeah it's the last game of the season <laughs> Well, there's yeah, another but game. But, I don't. Uh, I don't think that Rangers are going to take the pedal off when they've got this unbeaten season to go with. So you ain't going to lose to Aberdeen, and your side's too strong to play out a draw with them. And I'm going to go confident. I'm going to go confident. Not as obviously as confident as Marcus for the Rangers result, but I'm. I'm going. I'm going to say. I'm going to say a solid three 0 Yeah, solid three 0 I'll be. I'll be watching this in a pub in Glasgow somewhere. I'm going to say one 0 Rangers. Fair enough. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I was going to say as well, there is a, another game, you know, after that one at the end of the season, but none of your clubs will uh, know about that apart from Sam. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. All right. All right. All right. We'll, we'll get the again. predictions in for that one um, next episode, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. that'll be what the only be... prediction next episode. <laughs> what will be the, the cup final? The cup what final, when the, the playoff, I think the playoff. Finals are around there. Ah, we can do it. We can do the player finals and the cup finals. Yeah, we can do those next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it'll be the Euros. I mean, if we're really going to start throwing things in, we can throw in the Europa League and the Champions League or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, sc- only Scottish Kyle, football. Who, yes. who got points for the semis, Kyle? Uh, right. You guys keep predicting, and I'll add them up. Yeah. As um, we speak. And the final game in the top six right. or at the same time is St. Johnston versus Livingston. Oh, okay. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, one nil St. Johnston. I'm okay. gonna agree with Marcus. One nil St. Johnston. Yeah, I think I think St. Johnston will be uh be ra- raring to go for the cup. So I think they'll uh they'll also rest a few players. Yeah, but I, I think they're still they'll they'll want to be in good form going into the cup. So I'd like to see them win two 0 Who's all saying one nil? So I'm saying three one St. Johnston. 
So the three ones are just mm. right, okay. They don't uh, tend to be high scores though. But... Yeah, but no, they to... don't. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say two nils and Johnson. I two. I'm a match on that two nils and Johnson. Go away. I mean, the good thing is, <laughs> like, they've kind of um sussed out that two players that are out with COVID aren't really key players in this side. Because like. Mm. They, they spoke about the goalkeeper and then obviously they had to bring in Zlamal, but Xander Clark still played against uh, St Mirren. No, it was... Um... Did he? Yeah, Clark, yeah, Clark played oh, against okay. St Mirren. All right. So I think the, the players that are out are kind of like the, the backup players or something. Mm. But I couldn't see any big names missing from that St Johnson team on, on Sunday. Nah, they, they have enough steps to, to rotate. They did it against us, Easter Road, so... Going on to Sunday's games, the final games in the bottom six. And a game that could decide relegation, well, it will decide the relegation, is between Hamilton and Kilmarnock. Yeah. 3 1 Kilmarnock and Hamilton go down. Oh, you can 3 1 Kilmarnock, yeah? Yes. Cool. That's, that's it. 5 3 Hamilton for me. Absolute romper, romper test of season. <laughs> what? Bye. <laughs> Three. <laughs> I want to. I want to see Kelly go down. I want to see the cockroach at Hamilton live. Do you, five three. No, five three. Don't. Hamilton. You must be the I only do. person on the pod that actually wants Hamilton to, to stay up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I kind of do and I kind of don't at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah, I, mean, I don't want to lose the derby, but at the same time, it's like that way that they've always had that thing that it's like this season they've always laughed. I was like, oh, Motherwell's going down, and I just like to go, ha. Like at the end of the season, um, yeah, yeah. Also, I I think I kind of I've I've always had that conversation with Marcus like the last two seasons like yeah. oh back and go down the lose, lose the derby, but then as he always says about Hearts, it's like see if you get them in the Betfred Cup or Scottish Cup, it's way more exciting. Yeah, it's kind of how it yeah. feels when we get Airdrie. Um, like so when. For, when Hearts yeah. went up in the championship and we only played them in the cups and packed them out every time, it was it was brilliant. <laughs> and and that's kind of how it feels when Motherwell get Airdrie just now. Um, but for uh, for me, it's kind of it's difficult to say at the same time. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go three to Kelly. I think Hamilton will try everything to survive because it's it's Aki's. They'll try everything they possibly can, but it's not going to be enough to stop Kelly. Mm. I think Kelly's going to go into that playoff final again. My money would be on Rafe Rovers. I think Rafe Rovers would That'd be a good game. game. I really hope they come up. Um, yeah. It'd be a nice, nice story. Two promotions in two years. I'm going to say, I'm going to say from Avatar, I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to say 2 0 Kelly. I'm gonna yeah. say three mm, one Kelly. Fair enough. Okay. Um, moving on, another team involved in that relegation battle is Ross County, and they're playing Motherwell away. So at mm. Fair Park. It's gonna be two nil. Wait, 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 I'm running out of room. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Right. So sorry. Who was Motherwell versus County? Motherwell versus County. Okay. Oh, that's a bit tough. Yeah, Motherwell versus County. 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 Yeah, Motherwell Mm. Right. I'm I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say uh, one nil Motherwell. Oh uh, yeah, one nil Motherwell. So I far back, isn't it? Yeah, I think it'd be one nil Motherwell as well. Stop, copy man. <laughs> yeah, but you know Andy always gets them right, so. Uh... Yeah, yeah. I'm quite, quite confident then. <laughs> hey, Lewis, just see my man. To be fair. Uh... To be fair, like, and I, I do kind of agree with with Sam 
Wow. There's like there's nothing to play for from Motherwell. Yeah. The whole season's been about staying up. The whole season has been about staying up and that's been done. The the only thing that I can really argue is that we've got to hold off St Mirren mm. and hold on to that seventh place, but I'd even take an eighth place fin- eighth eighth place finish. Mm. Beat Dundee United tomorrow. We're on 47. 47 points and then if we were to beat Ross County we'd be on 50 St Mirren they're, a point are, behind. they're always a point behind us uh, but they ain't going to get beat off Kilmarnock so mm. and their last game of the season is against Dundee United so but at the same time 7 for 8 if I'm happy we're still in the league so I'm going to say for that reason 1-1 one, one Ross County Motherwell um, as I've seen towards the start of the season uh, prior. Yeah. Fair enough, man. All right. And the final game um, that we're predicting of the season um, wow. in the league is St Mirren versus Dundee United. Um, well, I'll start off. 1 0 St Mirren. I need to copy and paste. One nil St. Mirren, yeah. Yeah. Uh, give me a step. One nil St. Mirren, yep. Nil nil. Sam's pulling up the nil nil card. Right. It's the opposite to the five five card. <laughs> <laughs> two two. Two two Marcus, right? Okay. Lewis. Two one St. Mirren. Uh, St. Mirren elite frog us at the last game of the season to go to the uh, seven. I'm going to say 1 0 St. Mirren, yeah. Agree with Andy again. Yeah. That includes them all, doesn't it? Yeah, that is. Aye, all, that's the one. Right. That's all the so I'll there. go back to the semi final predictions, which I'll mm. reveal in this one. I can reveal someone has got full marks Ooh. for both semi finals. Did they? Yes. It was you, wasn't it? It was you. Yes, it was me. Oh. So, so I guess the the two nil Hibs and the two ones in Johnson. So eight points just through two games for myself. Looking very good for this prediction. Yeah, but I think Hal's getting that more as well. It, it's it's a it's a long one. It's a long one. So we never know. Yeah, that's twelve um, games between. 12 games. Yeah. Mm. So Sam, you got one for the Hibs game. Marcus, you got four for the Hibs game. No, so you didn't get any for the St. John's because you thought St. Yeah, because I thought COVID would forget yeah. St. John's and Hazard actually did. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm quite happy so far. It's looking, looking very good so far. What the, the, what the, the totals? I'm not I'm not going to do them at the end once we do all the predictions and then I'll add total them up in the end. Okay. Oh, okay, so we're waiting for So, it'll be a bit of suspense. Suspense for next week's pod where we'll... Uh, have a look at the last uh, games of the season and also have a look ahead to the Scottish Cup final. Um, so that's all next week. But this week, uh, I think we'll leave it there. So thank you guys for joining me. Thanks. Yeah. Cheers. And we'll uh, see you all next week. The False 90s podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Podbean, and our website at false90s.wordpress.com. For updates, follow False Nineties on both Twitter and Instagram. And a big thank you to Francisco Alvia and his track Space Game, which is our theme tune. Yeah, I would cut the silence out here. Uh, this is taking me ages. So wait, there's an easier way to do this. We well, yeah, add them all up. <laughs>